two videos in one day? What's going on, man? Well, I, you can see that I'm out running some errands, okay? But I won't feel good about taking the time out to do those errands unless I make some headway on this video because this is important. And what I'll do is I'll just get, tell you my thoughts now and then I'll insert the, uh, the readover from Walter or I suppose Walter's puppeteer and what they had to say uh, when I get back to the office. And what we're talking about today is House Joint Resolution 44 is coming up in the House of Representatives for a vote, and the White House is big mad about this. The administration strongly opposes H.J. Res 44, disapproving the U.S. Department of Justice Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives rule relating to factoring criteria for firearms atta with attached stabilizing braces. I know that you're shocked by that. The rationale is clear. Short barrel rifles are more concealable than long guns, yet more dangerous and accurate at a distance than traditional pistols. Stop. Stop. This is a blatant lie. Just because it says short on it doesn't mean that it's more concealable. Is a pickup truck more concealable than a semi truck? I suppose technically, yes. That doesn't mean that you can fit it in a purse. Recently, however, the gun industry has circumvented the long-standing law by manufacturing and selling so-called stabilizing braces that convert heavy pistols into short barrel rifles. Sorry, buddy. That does not make them SBRs. We have over a decade's worth of precedent from Fat D that says they're not SBRs. And just because you can't get anything done because your agenda is wildly unpopular doesn't mean that you can just go in, usurp the power of Congress, and rewrite some rules. Obligatory reference for dangerous and unusual. We saw that coming. Here's the thing there, Joey. In order for something to be validly classified under the GCA and NFA, it must be simultaneously dangerous and unusual. 530-some thousand SBRs? Hmm, that sounds like common use to me. That is definitely no longer unusual. 40-some million pistols stabilizing braced attached pistols? Mm, sounds even more common use to me. You best call in the nurse. She's going to need to bring you either your oatmeal or your pudding because that next dose of copium is going to go down pretty hard. If H.J. Res 44 were presented to the president, he would veto it. You heard what Jeff or uh, Joe Joe said, and that's that he's going to veto it. Well, Kurt, why do I care? If it's going to get vetoed, it's not going to become law. No, it's bigger than that. It's not just about does it pass House and then pass Senate and then become uh, law with the president's signature. That was a foregone conclusion that wasn't going to happen, okay? I need you to understand the default state of your government, the preferred state, is absolute gridlock. What we want out of this House joint resolution isn't for it to become law. We just want, first and foremost, a count of who's a rhino and who actually takes their oath to support and defend the Constitution and your rights seriously. Braden just did a video about this like a couple hours ago about how we as a community are actively purging ourselves of these traitors. And this is an, an opportunity for us to get an active count on a important issue dealing with the Second Amendment of who supported us and who did not. And I need you to get in contact with your House of Representatives people. I'll have the number listed in the description box down below. It's really easy. You just call them, get on the switchboard, tell them where you are and that you would like to talk to your, uh, your representative. And you just let them know that you're watching very carefully what they're doing when it comes to this vote. The second thing that it does is you've seen all these lawsuits that we've been talking about for months at this point in time. A congressional disapproval from one of the houses of government can be potentially the death nail in the coffin of this brace rule. We already have some preliminary injunctions, which means that we're likely to succeed on the merits of the case just based on not even hearing the arguments, just on the facts of the case. If you add on top of that a congressional disapproval saying, hey, Supreme Court or appellant court, whoever it ends up being in front of, ultimately, we are Congress and this executive agency is acting outside of its bounds and we say so because we're the people who gave them the power to do it. Knock them down. That is exactly what we want. What I'll leave you with here today is that 
I have seen quite a number of people. I, I read almost everything that you guys write. I've seen a lot of people expressing their discontent in the comment section. Why do they have to do this? Why can't they just leave us alone? They need to respect the Constitution, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, I'm, I'm with you, obviously. But I need you to understand that America was never meant to exist in a state of contentment and peace. That's not how it was built. Take the story of the lady who asked Benjamin Franklin when they came out. Well, doctor, do we have a republic or a monarchy? And his response was, a republic, if you can keep it. You have been convinced by the previous generation and the powers that be, the populist movement in the media, that there are things that are important in your life. And I understand that you've got a job and family and, and all these, a mortgage and all these things to do. Everybody does. But you have been convinced that you need to cede the collective power of your voice as a citizen to groups like the National Rifle Association. And they're going to take care of all this for you as long as you give them some of your money. The truth of the matter is that that is a direct subversion of your constitutional duty as a citizen. You have to be politically active. And if you have... Any questions about how you got today, just look at how the last two generations have handled uh, defending your rights. We are where we are today because they took a back seat and said, oh, well, that's not the hill to die on. That's not all that important. Uh, it's, just, it's just those tactical guys over there. No, we as a community have to work together and it only takes a few seconds. You have the ultimate technology that the human race has been able to express into the world at your fingertips at all times. Your enemies are well organized and they are calling right now. You are also currently winning, but I promise you that if you don't keep the pressure on, that, that tide will change. So I ask you to please take a few seconds out, do your part, and hopefully together we can break the cycle that you and I inherited.